Hi, I'm Blaine Moores. I'm an associate professor of biochemistry at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City. My lab studies the role of RNA structure and RNA editing. We use uh, X-ray crystallography to study the structures of these RNAs. We spend a lot of time in the lab preparing our samples for structural studies, and then uh, we also spend a lot of time at the computer analyzing the resulting data. I was seeking ways of using voice computing to try to enhance my productivity. I divide voice computing into three activities, speech to text or dictation, speech to commands, and speech to code. I'll be talking about speech to text and speech to commands today because these are two um, activities that um, are probably most broadly applicable to the workflows of people attending this conference. This talk will not be about uh, Emacs Speaks. This is a venerable program for converting text to speech. We're talking about the flow of information in the opposite direction, speech to text. We need an Emacs Listens. We don't have one. So I <clears throat> had to seek uh, uh, help from outside the Emacs world via the VoiceIn um, Plus. And this runs in the uh, Google uh, Chrome web browser, and it's uh, very good for speech-to-text and very easy to learn how to use. It also has some speech-to-commands. However, Town Voice is much better with uh, speech-to-commands, and uh, it's also great at speech-to-code. So the motivations are uh, obviously, as I mentioned already, for improved productivity. So if you're a fast typist who types faster than they can speak, then um, you, nonetheless, you might still benefit from voice computing when you grow tired of using the keyboard. On the other hand, you might be a slow typist who talks um, faster than they can type. In this case, uh, you're definitely going to benefit from dictation because you'll be able to encode as text more, more words in uh, text documents in a given day. If you're a coder, then um, you may uh, get a kick out of opening programs and websites and coding projects by using your voice. Then there are health-related reasons. <clears throat> you may have impaired use of your hands, eyes, or both due to uh, accident or disease, or you may suffer from uh, a repetitive stress injury. Uh, many of us have this in a mild but chronic form of it. We can't take a three-month sabbatical from the keyboard without losing our jobs, so um, these injuries tend to persist. And then you may have learned that uh, it's not good for your health to uh, sit for prolonged periods of time with your um, staring at the computer screen. You can actually um, dictate um, uh, to your computer from 20 feet away while uh, looking out the window thereby giving your uh, lower body a break and your eyes a break. I'm not God, so I have to bring data. Uh, I have two data points here, the number of words that I wrote in the uh, June and July this year and in September and October. I uh, adopted um, the use of voice computing in the middle of August. So you can see I got a over a threefold uh, increase in my output. So this is the uh, 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 Chrome Store website for VoiceIn. So it's only available for Google uh, Chrome. Uh, you just hit the install button to install it. To configure it, you need to select a language. Um, it has uh, support for 40 languages and it supports about a dozen different dialects of English including Australian. It works on web pages with text areas, uh, so it works. I use it regularly on uh, Overleaf and 750words.com, a uh, diffraction free environment for uh, writing. It also works in web mails, it works in Google, um, excuse me, it works in uh, Jupyter Lab, uh, of course, because that runs in the browser. It also works in uh, Jupyter Notebook and uh, Colab Notebook. It should work in uh, CloudMax. 
I've mapped uh, option L to opening voice in uh, when the cursor is on a, a web page that has a text area. So that's the main uh, limiting factor. So it has a number of built-in commands. You can turn it off by saying stop dictation. Um, it, it doesn't distinguish between a command mode and a dictation mode. It has an undo command. Um, when you use a command, copy that to uh, copy a selection. Uh, the press commands are used in the uh, browser. So you uh, press enter to um, well, uh, issue a, a command uh, or uh, text that has been uh, uh, written in a web form. And then press tab will open up the next um, tab in a web browser. And then scroll up and down will allow you to navigate a uh, web page. I've put together a quiz about these uh, commands so that uh, you can uh, go through this quiz several times until you get at least 90% of them correct, 90% of the questions correct in order to uh, boost or recall the commands. I have a Python script that uh, you can probably uh, pound through the, uh, the quiz with in uh, less than a minute uh, once you uh, know the commands. I also provide a, a e-list version of this quiz, but it's uh, a little slower to operate. These are some common errors that I've run into with VoiceIn. Uh, it, well, it likes to contract um, statements like I will into I'll. Uh, um, contractions are not used in formal writing, and most of my writing is formal writing, so I these, this annoys me. I will show you how I corrected uh, for that problem. It also drops the first word in um, sentences uh, quite often. This might be some uh, speech issue that I have. It inserts the wrong word because it's not in the dictionary that was used to um, train it. Uh, so, for example, the word pi mole is um, the name of a lecture graphics program that we use in our field. It uh, doesn't recognize primal. Instead, it substitutes in the word primal. Um, since I don't use primal very often, I've mapped the word primal to primal. Uh, in some custom commands I'll talk about in a minute. Then there's a problem that uh, the commands that uh, exist um, might get executed when you speak them, when in fact uh, you wanted to uh, use the words in those commands. In a, um, during your dictation. So this is a problem, our pitfall of uh, voice in, in that it doesn't have a command mode that's separate from a dictation mode. So um, you can set up through a very easy to use GUI um, uh, um, custom voice commands mapped to what you want inserted. Um, so this is how misinterpreted words can be corrected. You just map the misinterpreted word to the intended word. You can also uh, map um, the contractions to their expansions. I uh, did this for 94 English uh, contractions. And you can find this on GitHub. You can also insert uh, acronyms and you can all, and expand those acronyms. I apply the same approach to the first names of colleagues. I say expand Fred, for example, to get um, Fred's first and last name with the spelling of his very long uh, German name. You can also um, in insert other um, trivia like uh, favorite URLs. Uh, you can insert uh, a lot of text snippets and uh, um, so it will uh, handles uh, correctly multi-line um, uh, snippets. You just have to enclose them in uh, double quotes. You can even insert uh, BibTeX site keys for uh, references that you use frequently. All fields have certain key references for uh, um, certain methods or topics.
Then it has a set of commands that uh, are that you can customize for a, the purpose of speech to commands to get the computer to do something like open up a, a specific website or uh, save the current writing. In this case, we have uh, press is uh, a mapping of is applied to uh, the com uh, command S for saving current writing. Uh, you can change language and you can uh, change the case of the text. But these, uh, the uh, com um, speech to the command repertoire is quite limited in uh, uh, voice in. So uh, it's now time to pick up on uh, Talon voice. This is a open source project. It's free. Um, it is uh, highly configurable via Talon script, which is a subset of Python. You can use both either Talon script or Python to configure it, but it's easier to code up your configuration in Talon script. It has a Python interpreter embedded in it, so you don't have to mess around with installing yet another Python interpreter. It runs on all platforms, um, and it has a uh, a dictation mode that's separate from a command mode. Um, you can uh, activate it and it will be in a uh, uh, listening state asleep. You just bark out Talon wake to start the, to wake it up and Talon sleep to have it uh, go into a, a listening state. Um, it has a very welcoming community on uh, in a uh, Talon Slack channel, and then I need to uh, point out that uh, there's a, several packages that others have developed that run on top of Talon, and but one of particular note is by Pokey Rule. He has uh, on his website uh, some really well done videos that demonstrate how uh, he uses Cursorless to. Um, uh, move the uh, cursor around using voice commands. This, however, runs on VS Code. Uh, at least that's the text editor for which he's primarily developing cursorless. So um, I followed the protocol uh, outlined by uh, Tara Royce. She has a series, a collection of tutorials on YouTube as well as on GitHub that are quite helpful. I followed her tutorial for installing uh, Talon on uh, Mac OS without any uh, issues. Uh, and then, but uh, allow for half an hour to an hour to go through the process. When you're done, you'll have this uh, Talon icon appear in the toolbar on the Mac. When it has this uh, diagonal line across it, that means it's in the sleep state. Um, so this uh, leads to uh, cascading pull-down menus. This is it for the GUI interface. Um, you, uh, one of your first tasks is to select a, um, a, a large language model or language model that will be used um, to interpret your, the sounds that you generate uh, as uh, words. And uh, the other kind of key feature is that uh, there's a, under scripting, there's a view log um, pull down that opens up a uh, window that uh, displaying the log file. Whenever you make a change in the, a Talon configuration file, that change is implemented immediately. You do not have to restart uh, Talon to get the change to take effect. So this is an example of a Talon file. It has uh, two components. It has a header above the dash uh, that describes the scope of the commands contained below the, the dash. Each command is separated by a blank line. Uh, if um, a voice command is mapped to multiple actions, these are listed uh, separately on indented lines uh, below the first line. Uh, the words that are in square brackets are optional. Um, so I have uh, mapped uh, the word uh, toggle voice in, or the, the phrase toggle voice in to uh, the um, keyboard shortcut Alt L in order to uh, toggle on or off voice in. If I toggle voice in on, you, 
uh, I need to immediately uh, toggle off uh, Talon and this is done through the, um, this key command for control T um, which is mapped to uh, speech toggle. Then there are um, here's a couple other examples. So the if that there's no header present, it's an optional uh, feature of Talon files. Then the commands in the file will apply in all situations and all modes. Uh, here we have uh, two restrictions. This is only these commands will only work when using the iterm2 terminal emulator for the Mac, and then only when the title of the window in iterm2 has this particular uh, address, which corresponds to, which is what appears when I've logged into the supercomputer at uh, the University of Oklahoma. So one of the commands in this file is uh, check jobs, it's mapped to an alias, uh, a bash alias um, CJ uh, for check jobs, which in, which in turn is mapped to a, a script called uh, checkjobs.sh that when it's run, returns a listing of the pending and running jobs on the supercomputer in a format that I find pleasing. So this uh, backslash n um, after uh, cj, uh, new line character, uh, enters the command. Um, so I, I don't have to uh, do that as an additional step. And then likewise, uh, here's a similar setup for interacting with a Ubuntu virtual machine. So in terms of picking up uh, voice computing, these are my recommendations. You're going to run into more errors than you may like initially. And uh, uh, so you uh, need some patience in dealing with those. Um, and also it will take you a while to uh, get your head wrapped around uh, Talon, how it works. Uh, you will definitely want to use these custom commands to correct the errors or shortcomings of the language models. And uh, you've seen how um, uh, by opening up projects by voice commands, you can reduce uh, friction uh, in terms of uh, restarting work on a project. We've seen how um, voice in is uh, 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 preferred for more more accurate dictation. Um, I think my error rate is about one to two percent. That is one to, to two uh, out of a uh, hundred words are incorrect versus a town voice where I think the error rate is closer to five percent. Um, I have put together uh, contractions also for Talon that and they can be found here on GitHub and I also have a quiz uh, of 600 questions about t uh, some basic Talon commands. So I'd like to thank uh, the people who've helped me out on the Talon Slack channel and uh, members of the uh, Oklahoma Data Science Workshop where I gave a uh, hour-long talk on this topic uh, several weeks ago. I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, my friends at the Berlin and Austin Emacs Meetup and at the MX Research uh, Slack channel. And uh, <clears throat> I thank uh, these uh, grant funding agencies for supporting my work. I'll be happy to take any questions.